Hi, and welcome to Masterclass once again. This time we will attempt to shed some light on the creative process. And we also will try to unravel some of the mysteries that surround creativity. And I can't think of a better place to be doing this, right? But in front of this particular piano. This uh, is a very special piano and it's one of my favorite ones because I have written and recorded in my time one of my all-time favorite albums on this particular piece of equipment. And it's, um, it's a little bit out of tune. It has been retired and it's living happily ever after right here. <laughs> anyway, a lot of learning has taken place because of this piano. Uh, getting back to creativity. The interesting thing about the creative process is that when you're in it, you cannot observe it. And if you try to observe it, you cannot be in it. It's a paradox, isn't it? And that's what was driving me crazy too. It's like, how, how can you study it? Uh, the, I was so frustrated and you know, with my background in psychology, I decided to study it a little bit. I thought, that, that, you know, why sometimes I can write a song in, in a moment and then other times I would be sitting here for a week or 10 days and, and have nothing. That could not be. There, there, should, there would be something that I was doing wrong. And I thought there's got to be a way to control the creative process. See, the, way, the, the word control, though, is misleading because control is an illusion. You cannot control the creative process. You really surrender to it. It's counterintuitive. You think you can grasp at it, but you can't. The creative process is much like a, a butterfly. You have to close your eyes, extend your hand, and visualize it landing right here on your hand, and it does, and when it does, it's magic. If you grasp at it, you will kill it, you will destroy it. It's the same thing with the creative moment, you can't grasp at it, you have to let it come to you, you have to surrender to it, in other words, and when it appears, let it just take you, go right through you and immerse yourself in it. In other words, become one with it. If you're writing music, become one with the music. I know that sounds a little strange, but trust me, it is doable, it is attainable, and it's very reasonable. The creativity and the creative process is a, is a state of mind. It's like the athletes call it the zone. Um, there are many ways that people try to understand what's really happening to them when they're in a creative mode and things, the sparks are flying and, and the next moment everything just shuts down and you have no access to anything. I will attempt to explain a little later on by playing the piano and really I'm going to pick one piece of music that taught me quite a lot. I have a lot of pieces of music I had trouble with when I was writing them 30 years ago. Um, but for now, I just like to, to, to direct you to a couple of, I don't want to call them rules, but I know one thing, that judgment and creativity are opposites. They're both valid and you need them both, but they cannot exist in the same place at the same time. It's, um, if you judge what you're creating, the creative moment ends and you're outside looking in at what you just did. So now you're the, the observer, you're not the object. You have to be it. So you can't become aware of it. It has to happen um, uh, with, without awareness, almost it's a surrender. It's, I, what I do is this. I, I don't do what I've heard um, people in yoga try to empty my mind and all that. I just allow my mind to be free to roam, to go anywhere it wants. 
I know I'm sitting in front of a piano waiting for something to happen. Uh, or sometimes I just sit and I just listen. And I listen to the black. I listen to the unknown. Because everything that I'm going to ever write uh, in the future is in the unknown. I call it the black. The lead part is the knowledge, all the songs I've ever written, everything I think I know, and so on. So I befriend the unknown. The unknown is my friend. All the beauty that I will ever come across that's new and fresh is out there. Again, becoming one with your creation is the key. And uh, you have to follow it. You let your mind go for a while, then you may think during the day what happened, what you liked, what you didn't like, what you're thinking about tomorrow, what happened yesterday, and so on, and it meanders. And at one point, it's going to go into the music. It's inevitable. So when that thought comes, I let it take me. I become one with it, and it guides me. It can take, it can go left, right, up, down. It can just climb up and climb down and dive and fly, and there's no limit to it. The moment you become aware of what is happening to you, whether you're going right, left, uh, up, down, diving, whatever, flying, that's the moment where the creative process ends and you're outside looking in, passing judgment on what you're creating, um, saying, well, it might be too fast, too slow, too cold, too sweet, too anything. It doesn't really matter. Now, I can show you a little bit on the piano how this might work. I remember it was over 30 years ago. I didn't know anything of what I just told you. Um, and you can see how difficult the subject is to address because you can't put it into words. But I promise you one thing, once you feel the creative spark and it happens, you will never forget it. And the more you do it, the more, uh, the better you become on it and the longer you can stay in it and you can go in and out at will almost. In the old days, it would take me maybe a day, a half a day, five hours, then one hour. And right now, one minute to five minutes a minute. And once I start flying with it, um, I feel hot. There's a, there's, a, there's a feeling to creativity. You know, I get goosebumps, I feel hot. I, I can only do it so long and then after that I have to stop. But I can stay in it for minutes or half an hour at a time. And if I get out of it uh, for a few minutes or so, I can pretty much in 30 seconds to a minute later, I can get back into it. Getting back to this particular song, uh, I remember it was over 30 years ago. I kept hearing these notes and I have perfect pitch, so they speak to me like words. I kept hearing, Do, Re, Si, Do, Fa, Do, Re, Si, Do, Fa, Re, Mi, Do, Re, Fa, Re, Mi, Do, Re, Fa, Re, Mi, Do, Re, So, Do, Re, Si, Do, So, Do, Re, Si, Do, Fa, it goes like this. And then he went, do re do si la sol pa mi, re do si la sol. And I, I got so excited about it, he went. And I thought, wow, that's amazing. And that's when it all ended. ended. It was over. I had this, the beginnings of this, what I thought a beautiful song, which is in 5-8, it's like do, re, si, do, fa, like one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, three. At the time I was writing it, I would never know what it was. There's no judgment. I, I, the, my hands were just moving. So it ends up being nostalgia, which <laughs> yeah, a lot of you know it. So when you play it uh, correctly, it's in I woke up, I said, I like to dive down, but I thought, what? What happens? And then I spent three days <laughs> trying to come up with the next part. What's the next part? 
I don't, I couldn't think. I thought, chorus? Do you do chorus? I can't, I, no, I cannot go. And I cannot continue going down. At some point, it has to come back up. That's now contriving it. I'm trying to control creativity. That doesn't work very well. If you become really good as a composer, as time goes by, you can write anything. But you're not going to write the most amazing things in your life like that. It is complete surrender and let it, the song will let you know what it wants to be. So three days went by, I remember that. And I was very frustrated because I wanted to finish this piece of music because I knew it was going to be great. And I kept hearing, si me fa sol si la do fa sol la si re sol la si re mi la re do si. I heard that out of the blue for no reason. And it goes like this. And that was the turnaround. turn around because this is a perfect circle this piece of music is an absolute magic I don't know how I came up with it 35 years ago I didn't understand any of this you go at the end this these two notes it doesn't stop it otherwise you have to see and then you got to stop and I don't want to stop song is that the climb up was actually five. It's like a C me fa sol si la do fa sol la si re sol la si re mi la re do si. There's five bars <laughs> and the beginning was four bars. I had no clue about this at all when I was writing it. So anyway, there's magic to it. And the surrender aspects that I talked about earlier are very, very important. Um, that's all. There's a lot of long time right now I've been talking and that's the best I can do. I hope what I demonstrated is of some help to some of you out there who are writing music or playing the piano or whatever it is that you're creating because it's the same uh, problem that a writer will face when they're faced with an empty piece of paper and a, and a pen or a pencil. They know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's just like me sitting in front of the piano going, what's the first note? What's the first word? What's the first paint, whatever color brush stroke you're going to put on your painting? It is the most difficult thing to start with. And yet, when you're in the state of surrender where you become one with the creative process, it's effortless. It all appears to you all at once. And it's easy. So now I'm just going to leave you with something. Uh, I, I have played it, this one for 25 years. This is... This is one of, uh, let me see if I can think of it. So you can see me trying to pull the strings now of my uh, memory. Uh, it's a thread. Let me see, it goes.
getting better at it as I'm getting it out. And then I know it finishes with uh, all little children must go to bed. It's the end of the fairy tale, you know. That's all I remember. I know a lot of you already know how to play the song. I didn't play it perfectly. All the notes are not there, but the direction was there. So I thought I'd leave you with that. Uh, anyway, it was a lot of fun doing this class. I hope you enjoyed it. I want to thank you all for staying this long with me and listening through. Take care. I love you all. We'll see you soon.